Epilogue Later that afternoon, after all the noise and celebrations had died down, Will sat alone on the tiny veranda of Holt's small cottage. In his hand, he held a small bronze amulet, shaped like an oak leaf, with a steel chain threaded through a ring on the top. It's our symbol, his teacher had explained as he handed it to him after the events at the castle. The ranger's equivalent of a coat of arms. Then he had fumbled inside his own collar and produced an identically shaped oak leaf on a chain around his neck. The shape was identical, but the colour was different. The oak leaf Holt wore was made of silver. Bronze is the apprentice colour, Holt had told him. When you finish your training, you'll receive a silver oak leaf like this one. We all wear them in the Ranger Corps, either silver or bronze. He had looked away from the boy for a few minutes and then had added, his voice a little husky, strictly speaking, you shouldn't receive it until you've passed your first assessment, but I doubt anyone will argue about it the way things have turned out. Now the curiously shaped piece of metal gleamed dully in Will's hand as he thought of the decision he'd made. It seemed so strange to him that he had voluntarily given up the one thing he had spent most of his life hoping for, the chance to go through battle school and take his place as a knight in Castle Redmont's army. He twirled the bronze oak leaf on its chain around his index finger, letting it wind right up the finger and then spiral loose again. He sighed deeply. Life could be so complicated. Deep within himself, he felt he had made the right decision. And yet, way down deeper still, there was a tiny thread of doubt. With a start, he realised there was someone standing beside him. It was Holt, he recognised as he turned quickly. The ranger stooped and sat beside the boy on the rough pine planking of the narrow veranda. Before them, the low sun of the late afternoon filtered through the luminous green leaves of the forest. The light seeming to dance and gyrate as the light breeze stirred the leaves. It's a big day, he said softly, and Will nodded. And a big decision that you made, the ranger said, after several more minutes' silence between them. This time, Will turned to face him. Halt! Did I make the right decision? He asked finally, the anguish clear in his voice. Holt placed his elbows on his knees and leaned forward a little, squinting into the dappled glare through the trees. As far as I'm concerned, yes. I chose you as an apprentice and I can see all the potential you have to be a ranger. I've even come to almost enjoy having you around and getting under my feet, he added with the barest hint of a smile. But my feelings and my wishes aren't important in this. The right decision for you is the one you want most. I always wanted to become a knight, Will said, and then realised with a sense of surprise that he had phrased that statement in the past tense. And yet he knew a part of him still wanted it. It is possible, of course, said Holt quietly, to want to do two different things at the same time. And then it just becomes a choice of knowing which one you want most. Not for the first time, Will felt that Holt had some way of reading his mind. If you can sum it up in one thought, what's the main reason you feel a little disappointed that you refused the Baron's offer? Holt continued. Will considered the question. I guess, he said slowly, I, I feel that by turning down battle school, I'm somehow letting my father down. Holt's eyebrows shot up in surprise. Your father? he repeated, and Will nodded. He was a mighty warrior, he told the ranger, a knight. He died at Hackham Heath fighting the Wargles, a hero. You know all this, do you? Holt asked him, and Will nodded. This was the dream that had sustained him through the long, lonely years of never knowing who he was or what he was meant to be. The dream had become a reality for him now. He was a man any son would be proud of, he said finally, and Holt nodded. That's certainly true. There was something in his voice that made Will hesitate. Holt wasn't simply agreeing out of politeness. Will turned quickly to him, realising the full implications of the ranger's words. You knew him, Holt. You knew my father? There was a light of hope in the boy's eyes that cried out for the truth, and the ranger nodded soberly. Yes, I did. I didn't know him for long, 
but I think I could say I knew him well. And you're right, you could be extremely proud of him. He was a mighty warrior, wasn't he? said Will. He was a soldier, Holt agreed, and a brave fighter. I knew it, Will said happily. He was a great knight. A sergeant, Holt said softly and not unkindly. Will's jaw hung open, the next words he'd been about to say frozen in his throat. Finally, he managed in a confused voice, A sergeant? Holt nodded. He could see the disappointment in the boy's eyes and he put an arm round his shoulders. Don't judge a man's quality by his position in life, Will. Your father, Daniel, was a loyal and brave soldier. He didn't have the opportunity to go to battle school because he began life as a farmer. But if he had, he would have been one of the greatest of knights. But he... The boy began sadly. The ranger stopped him, continuing in that same kind, soft, compelling voice. Because without taking any of the vows or the special training that knights have, he lived up to the highest ideals of knighthood and chivalry and valour. It was actually a few days after the battle at Hackham Heath, while Morgareth and his wargles were fighting their way back to Three Step Pass. A sudden counter-attack took us by surprise, and your father saw a comrade surrounded by a troop of wargles. The man was on the ground and was within a second of being cut to pieces when your father took a hand. The light in the boy's eyes had begun to shine again. He did? Will asked, his lips just framing the words. And Holt nodded. He did. He left the safety of the battle line and leaped forward, armed only with a spear. He stood over his injured comrade and protected him from the wargles. He killed one with the spear, and then another smashed the head of the spear, leaving Daniel with only a spear shaft. So he used it like a quarterstaff and knocked down two more, left, right, just like that. He flicked his hand to the left and the right to demonstrate. Will's eyes were intent on him now, seeing the battle as the ranger described it. He was wounded then as the spear shaft broke under another attack. It would have been enough to kill most men. But he simply took the sword from one of the wargles he had killed and struck down three more, all of them bleeding, all the time bleeding from a massive wound in his side. Three of them? Will asked. Three. He had the speed of a leopard. And remember, as a spearman, he had never really trained with the sword. He paused, remembering that day so long ago. You know, of course, that there is almost nothing the wargles fear. They're called the unminded ones, and once they begin a battle, they almost always finish it. Almost always. This was one of the few times I saw wargles afraid. As your father struck out to either side, still standing over his wounded comrade, they began to back away, slowly at first, and then they ran. They simply turned and ran. I've never seen any other man, no knight, no mighty warrior, who could send wargles running in fear. Your father did. He may have been a sergeant, Will, but he was the mightiest warrior I have ever had the privilege to watch. And then... As the wargles retreated, he sank down on one knee beside the man he had been protecting, still trying to shield him, even though he knew he was dying himself. He had taken half a dozen wounds, but it was probably the first one that killed him. And was his friend saved? Will asked in a small voice. Holt looked a bit puzzled. His friend? The man he protected, Will explained. Did he survive? Somehow he thought it would have been a tragedy if his father's valiance attempt had been unsuccessful. They weren't friends, said Holt. Up until that moment he had never laid eyes on the other man. He paused and then added, nor I on him. The significance of those last four words sank deep into Will's consciousness. You, he whispered, you were the man he saved? Holt nodded. As I said, I only knew him for a few minutes, but he did more for me than any other man before or since. 
and as he was dying he told me of his wife and how she was back at their farm alone with a baby due any day and he begged me to see that she was looked after. Will looked at the grim bearded face he had grown to know so well. There was a deep sadness in Holt's eyes as he remembered that day. I was too late to save your mother. It was a difficult birth and she died shortly after you were born. But I brought you back here and Baron Arold agreed that you should be brought up in the ward until you were old enough to become my apprentice. But all those years you never... Will stopped, lost for words. Holt smiled grimly at him. I never let on I placed you in the ward. No. Think about it, Will. People are strange about rangers. How would they have reacted to you as you grew up, wondering what sort of strange creature you were? We decided it would be better if nobody knew of my interest in you. Will nodded. Holt was right, of course. Life as a ward had been difficult enough. It would have been far more so if people had known he was somehow connected to Holt. So you took me as your apprentice because of my father, said Will. But this time Holt shook his head. No, I made sure you were looked after because of your father. I chose you because you showed you had the abilities and the skills that were needed. And you also seem to have inherited some of your father's courage. There was a long, long silence between them as Will absorbed the story of his father's amazing battle. Somehow, the truth was more stirring, more inspiring than any fantasy he could have made up over the years to sustain himself. Eventually, Holt stood up to go and he smiled gratefully up at the grizzled figure now silhouetted against the sky as the last light of the day died. I think my father would be glad I chose the way I did, he said, slipping the bronze oak leaf on its chain over his head. Holt merely nodded once, then turned away and went inside the cottage, leaving his apprentice to his own thoughts. Will sat quietly for some minutes. Almost unthinkingly, his hand went to touch the bronze oak leaf symbol hanging at his throat. Faintly, the evening breeze carried the sound of the battle school drill yard to him and the non-stop hammering and clanking from the armoury that had been going on night and day for the past week. They were the sounds of Castle Redmond preparing for the coming war. Yet strangely, for the first time in his life, Will felt at peace. The end, lovely people. I hope you enjoyed the story. We'll start our new book next week. I'm going to ask you on Seesaw which sort of book you would like to read next. Go and find the post, give me your answer, and then we can start.